Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me back here in Tio you know, the Last Days of Europe, in which we are playing as Mr. Well, Bennett. But President Bennett sides with the Republicans. In his most recent State of the Union address, President Bennett has announced support for the Republican wing of the RD coalition on the now all-encompassing issue of segregation. Pro-civil rights groups have already come out in celebration, emboldened by the President's support and their efforts to advocate freedom for all Americans, while more conservative sects have been quick to denounce these tyrannical measures. Since its creation in the mid-1800s, the Republican Party has argued for the rights of African Americans and the support of the level-headed and pragmatic Bennett has only encouraged them to pursue this agenda. Firmly believing that the time has come for equality before the law in the U.S., Republican politicians have now proposed various laws that would extend political and social equality to all Americans. The proposed Voting Rights Act, which would grant universal suffrage to citizens regardless of race, is the first of many measures to achieve these goals. The passage of these acts will be hotly contested but hopefully assured. The effects of this decision on the two parties' coalition have yet to be seen, but the projections do not look good. Many Southern Dixiecrats feel betrayed by the sudden change of course and in the confusion may be swayed to factions that re better represent their constituents. The social people of these measures will also surely have long-lasting effects on the nation. A promising step forward, even though we're still doing take the floor. So we got a little more unified, I think. And then the RDs are growing a little more unified. The OFM will grow a little more unified. Also, if you want to read about that, please go right ahead. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Latics here development. And, ooh, well, that's very nice. And, um, we got some of this as well. We got some comments to go through. And let's go get some cypher stuff done, just because we can, even though we're not going to really need it. A couple comments include, do uh, do the Pro-Civil Rights Act. Actually, the route we're taking, this literally is the Pro-Civil Rights Act. Token reform, don't rock the boat, means do we do nothing. But token reform is a civil rights pa uh, path, 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 so through change, progress. So this is a civil rights path. Um, and someone else asked, uh, well, can I do both paths? Eventually, I would like to. I would like to do don't rock the boat, leave it to the experts. And then through guidance stability. So we'll see what happens. Maybe we will. Maybe we won't. If there's enough support, maybe we will. And also, someone else asks, on the thumbnail, is that Johnny Sins? And I'm like, of course Johnny Sins. Of course. He was president, don't you know? A contest of compromise. President Wallace, I've been a sad at his desk, staring pensively at the notes. Weeks of trying to solve one of the most divisive issues in American social, political, and economic history has proven to be a challenge, to put it mildly. A meeting regarding the extent of the bill scheduled for today with some key Republican congressmen. Three Republicans walked into the room, greeting President Bennett now with a row of shining smiles, failing to put Bennett at ease. The congressman's outspokenness over the Voting Rights Act has given Bennett a good idea of what this meeting will turn into, and they didn't disappoint. Mr. President, the leader said, discussion over the upcoming Voting Rights Act has us anxious. My colleagues and I do not believe the bill reaches far enough in the protections of African Americans. My administration has been working tirelessly to ensure a passable and effective bill. Isn't it necessary to make sure the bill can survive the Congress in the first place, Bennett responded? A bill that commits to only two, one, two, one or two changes outside of a ban against poll taxes won't come remotely close to settling the injustices that African Americans face in American society. The hours went on, voices were raised, and breaks grew longer as the shadows crept into the Oval Office. If we accepted this compromise, we'd have 19 new supporters and Republicans. So, the election just happened. We actually got three more Republicans on our side. Um, we, the center lost four seats because they were only at five. And then the far right got one as well. So now we're at 49 Republicans, which is not bad. It's pretty solid South, except for Texas and sort of Oklahoma ish and sort of Missouri, but whatever. And, well, don't look at Mississippi or Tennessee too, but whatever. Um, honestly, like, we need the support right now, really badly, just because 23, that's 31 supporters. Oh, actually. Yeah, that is, that's barely enough. 31 supporters. We get 19. So that's 50. We need 50, right? Technically. Um, well, Hawaii doesn't have them, so we should be able to get it right. Right? Right? We should. Gotta hope so. Because right now we're doing a voting rights act, but on the side on the Democrats. In the interest of pursuing what is right for America, we must unfortunately concede that we have lost a lot of support with the conservative voting base. Segregationists accuse us of selling out of the civil rights movement. And a recent poll suggests that we will lose a significant number of votes in the next election as a result of our shift away from traditional conservatism. Though progressives have come to respect us for our acceptance of the concerns, most are likely to continue voting for either the Republicans or the Senate MPP. Parties more recognizably aligned with their values. Some call our new course, or political course, suicide. Maybe it is, but at least at the end of the day, we can say we put the needs of the country over the needs of the party. Alright, election results are in. Polls are updated. Cool. Very nice, very nice, very nice. Um, oh, this is kind of close. This is kind of really flipping close. Uh, let's see. Anything over here? Intelligence, that's fine. Anything? No, we can't do that one yet. That's fine. Uh, not really, but whatever. Um, actually, we got look, look at the political power. RD Unity? As, oh, we're ready for anything. Well, that's not kind of nice. Yeah. MPP is willing to put outside the differences for now. And they're not well, they're not willing to negotiate. God dang it. At least we got some Democrats, though. That's really nice. So, does that mean we pass it? Okay, it passes. Okay, whew. The Voting Rights Act. 
They heatedly fought over a bill over the political rights and protections of African Americans and managed to pass an early morning vote in Congress. Years of debate concluded with a step forward in offering some political protections for African Americans. President Bennett declared that the Voting Rights Act stands as a long overdue step to address one of the most bitter injustices in American history. While the administration regards the passage of the bill as a rising success, African Americans across the country reported mixed emotions over the bill. As one African American woman in Atlanta related, President Bennett takes a taking a larger step forward than anyone else regarding civil rights. But we've all been here before, with empty words and nothing to show for it. Many of the nation, however, are leaving with President Bennett's success, figuring that if more issues arise, they can be handled in due time. The sentiment, however, is now shared by the R.D. Southern Democrats and the far-right branch of the MPP. With this latest act, the Southern Democrats are likely to tell further to the far-right MPP on concerns of a federal overreach. Federal overreach. With moderated steps, we succeed. We become more popular, close more divided, increase the civil rights, and MPP looks better in southern states. Saddle on the Democrats now. And then just of pursuing what's right for America, we must unfortunately concede that we've lost a lot of support. Oh, I've read this one, so. Um, yeah, my bad. But yeah. The interest of the relationship with the Dixiecrats, which doesn't matter. And cool. And through change, progress. We are conservatives. That much has not changed. But fa to fail to let other ideas be heard and take root when the nation so clearly needs them is at the highest of the bullheadedness. We understand that our traditional voters may not agree, but it is our duty to represent all Americans, not just those who tick our boxes at the po polls. By guaranteeing true unalienable rights for everyone, we ensure that the nation can truly work together as one entity. To segregationists, we understand that we have disappointed you, and we know that we will continue to represent you in all other aspects. Even the seasons change, and for the sake of a country, so too must America. And we're rocking the boat, even though I've done nothing. Well, very low, negative 30. Wow, that's not good. We need a lot more political power. A day for tears? Oh, if you want to about this one, please go ahead. It's about Walt Disney, so... I thought it was like something about civil rights. I'm like, oh god, no, that's not good for us. Cool. And actually, what is the civil rights thing now? Well, if you need high American despair for now, last bastion of liberty. Powerful civil rights. Oh, get some political power with that. Nice. That's actually very good. So I feel somewhat confident that we can go and spend some political power with the for the Mormons, uh, American businesses. The Republicans love us. Catholic opinion is pretty low though. Hmm. Invite the Pope. I uh, don't want to do that one. Dixiecrats, no. Party unity, no care. Church and state, it's fine. There you go. At least keep helping them out, right? But it's almost 67, which is pretty nice. Pretty darn nice. Get 66 stuff. Very good, very good, very good. Military austerity. Well, we have to keep spending and cutting and, and spending. Not bad. Could be better, but that's actually not too bad. We're still building, well, some fortresses or land forts, but that's alright with us. That's a okay with us, my friends. Alright, so now we're middling, middling, uh, middling low. Catholic appeal. By the Pope. Yeah, I don't want to do that one. Um, I'm not sure how important it is. I don't want it low. How much political power do we get? 1.1? We said earlier. Yeah, 1.11. That's not bad. Yeah, hopefully this one. Yeah, the Republicans win a huge coup. The Democrats will flee to the far right, which actually might not be bad, especially for economic reasons. Maybe we'll see what happens. To save the Dixiecrats from having to be dealt with, and then for all the struggle. More conservative democracy, Democrats become more popular. Um, and what is this? Uh, depression? Decrease the effects of the American Depression. That's good. And liberal democracy, the Republicans become more popular, which is whatever. Uh, political landscape, yeah. 71 RD, so that's not too bad. Yeah, we get, we're done with the research. I wish there was more stuff for the CIA, which in Toolbox 3, whenever it comes out someday, which won't come out, but whatever, um, there should be stuff to do there too. Foreign business, American business, eh, we'll go. why not? Eh, very low, that's fine with us. Republicans have a 94% uh, popularity with us, or approval of us, which is nice. Nice. Silent the, the D's. Second of money calls. Ever since President Bennett passed his landmark civil rights bill, an air of unease has been existing in the RD party. The bill is unexpectedly liberal, pe mainly penned mainly by Republicans and a few Democrats. Consequently, almost 30% of the traditionally conservative Democrat voted against the bill. When the bill finally passed, the Alvarez proved extremely popular with the non Southern general public. <clears throat> In the months since then, the Democrats have been rapidly waning in power. The RDs have always been mainly Republicans, but the two groups were generally seen as equals. Now, after months of declining support, the Ds are the shadow party. They're second among equals. From this point onward, they and their viewpoints are on the way out. No official statement has been made regarding this political shift, but its effects already are evident. More than five Democratic congressmen have announced they are switching to the NPP. In the coming months, it's likely that more will follow within the Democratic Party. The shadow party loses its faith and all for the struggle. For over a decade, the issue of civil rights has hung over America like a looming storm cloud, bringing discord and upheaval in its wake. Near a year ago, streets all across our nation echo with the yells of progressives and segregationists crying fury in each other's faces, seeing each other not as fellow Americans but as enemies. The issue threatened to tear apart the very fabric of America. Now the streets are mostly quiet. Those once bellicose protesters and furious statesmen have either celebrated the dawn of a new day or accepted that the world has moved past their squabbles. Even if some are upset, President Bennett successfully secured the continued stability of American society. If you want to read about A for Switzerland, please go right ahead. 
Uh, loud is better than cry. Freedom by Jingo. Practice diplomacy. Uh, we give him tanks. God dang, nice. Why not? We'll help him out. Yeah, since uh, Goring the Fat Man is still fighting those guys, so. Yeah, up to 6 to 7, everybody. Are you still alive, Goring? Oh, look at that. That's really. Just sort of the Artemis Grandeur. Playing as Goring was so much fun. Except Switzerland was a god awful. It was terrible fighting Switzerland. My gosh, I hated it so much. It was against a German giant, yeah, that's they get even more buffs. Oh, but they're breaking through. They are definitely breaking through. So we'll see what happens with those guys. Uh, very high, middling, 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 middling. Of course, of course. There you go. Go to the Mormons too, because you can. Also, we're going to keep doing a lot of this stuff too, just because we can as well. Because why not? Yeah, for the struggle, and we are stronger. So we'll see what happens. That's not bad. 132 billion in, defs in debt. And there goes Switzerland. Well, we tried. Good job, fat man. Good job. Phase 4 cleanup. Oh, boy. A million manpower. Specialized training. Honestly, that million manpower is not... A I'm not going to say it's not enough, but you have to be very careful about your manpower because you don't have a lot of manpower when you play Goring. Is what is high. High, that's good. Middling. Middling, which is not good. Catholic. Separation of church and state. That's fine for now. We can do that one for now. Oh, yes. Strengthen pro-American sentiments. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Political landscape is fine. Yeah, I, I wish these focuses weren't so long, though. Oh, what is Indian elections? Oh, nice sunglasses. Are those aviators? <laughs> yeah, I, I just wish that... I don't know. These, these these focuses weren't 49 day focuses. It's just so long. It feels like there's there's less interaction we have with, you know, Bennett than, like, other presidents. Such as Barry Goldwater or something like that, I think. We're stronger. <clears throat> We're always stronger. We can call the issue of civil rights resolved, at least for now. Any further legislation on the on the matter can be handled in a calm, rational manner over time, as a great political system is always allowed for. With the main source of consternation in our nation quell, we can finally present ourselves as a strong united force against all the darkness of the world. Unlike in Japan or Germany, we Americans handle issues with dignity. <clears throat> not jackboots and suppression, but setting this example for not only our country, but all for the remaining free nations of the world. We can let humanity know that democracy is still kicking. Uh, today is our lucky day, Mr. President. We have some technology that will change into the Cold War. Wallace F. Bennett. I've been tapping his foot under his desk for five min minutes now, waiting for the Lockheed representative to make his important announcement. Just what could you possibly have now, Mr. Johnson? I haven't been impressed with your company in a while. We've been working on engineering this new spy plane, one that'll expose the Germans and Japanese for who they really are, the representative says. A hint of suspenseful destruction filling his otherwise quiet voice. He steps aside to reveal a blueprint for the new revolutionary aircraft. The long center vehicle failed to make a good first impression on the president, who at once believed the aircraft was too light. He would need more information and fast. Uh, the rep representative continued. This baby is a new, improved, uh, and a U2. Completely better cameras for better recon. It's also faster than some of our recent planes, so it can go anywhere and back in no time. Not only that, Mr. President, but it's bigger and stronger. When it can't maneuver, it can take a hit. Now, Ms. the President was intrigued. If he says what about the plane is true, the U.S. would certainly dominate the Cold War. Air reconnaissance like that would be very useful in diplomatic situations, situations that the U.S. could outright, outright win. All right, Mr. Johnson, I think we should take your plane on a test drive to make sure it really is what you say it is. I'm thinking we should send this plane over to Germany. Oh, crap. So look at that, Dick Scratch's opinion of us is irrelevant. Nice, and the Republicans love us. Everyone else is going like, eh. Um, if you want to read about that, please go ahead. About Star Trek. To boldly go where no man has gone before. The Beach Boys really smile. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. I'm picking up good vibrations from this one. Thank you very much. Uh, we like some good vibrations. Also, as you can tell, I did delete an entire army of tanks, but whatever. Certified gold, there you go. If you want to read about that one, please go ahead as well. Very nice. Very, very, very nice. Uh, oh, going my political power, man. Middling, middling, 62. Uh, Catholic, Catholic. Man, why can't we all be like one religion here? Catholic, Protestant, uh, even Mormon. All a bunch of weirdos that we love. <sighs> all for the struggle, my friends. All for the struggle. But now, basically, it's time... Oh, you become a spy master? Well, we don't have a PP to spare right now. We literally don't. Um, anything else here? No, 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 no. Well, fiscal or financial reform. The silver standard was once an excellent replacement for the gold standard for a financial system and a hallmark of success for a free market foundation for currency. However, with instability increasing with the stock market, the cracks begin to appear. The current financial system of the U.S. is unsustainable with a reliance on silver to back up the U.S. dollar. It's time for a reform to bring more prosperity to our U.S. If you wonder about this one, please go right ahead. We lost a pile of powers. Nice. Good job, guys. Good job. And, you know, just in case, let's go and save the game. Just because uh, we're going to make sure we're successful no matter what. Just the way we roll on this channel. 
Sometimes. Not all the time. Ah, the Coast Solutions. If you want to buy that one too, please go right ahead. Go get on the horn. Tell the Japanese to clear it out. No shrimp boat's going to hurt us this time. I swear to God. No, 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 no. Oh, wow. Um. Well, I guess he's coming back. If you want to buy this, please go right ahead. We got five more unified, which is nice. Okay. Goring just handed him over. Okay, yeah. Uh. Someone unified, which is nice. Where are we at for S1? Oh, and Unity. Well, American Middle Ages, that's a little better. The Japanese ran our ship. If you want to go down, please go ahead. Get us out of here? Uh, yeah. Might as well. We could use that political power. That doesn't matter what happens. So, you know what? Screw it. Save it again. Even though, if you save the game too much, it does eat up a, like, a lot of... Well, if you're like me, you play Hoi all the time. It does eat up a lot of uh, space. Storage space. But whatever. Oh, look at that. If you want to go down, please go ahead, too. Okay. All right, I've read this one before, so, okay. We just... Sure, why not? Why not? We just win both easily. We don't even do anything. And we win, basically. Political landscape. Okay, now that made us united. Look at that. Holy crap. We're united. <laughs> the RDs are ready for anything, and American society is united. No, what's the point of saving it? It just does it automatically. American Malays does hurt us. Or it could be extinguished. Uh, oh, Italy and OFN is really nice to have as well. Um... We have high unity. Financial reform, my friends. Financial reform. Not too much. Raise a support for Silver Act with the far right. That's not a bad idea. Uh, let's do that with one. Not too much. But stem the, and stem the tie, but still. We need to make sure that even though we are going to reform the economy, we can't sh shock it with changes that will basically cause our economy to possibly go into deep recession. It will weaken not only our prosperity, but will allow the Nazis and Japanese to get a leg up over us and weaken the confidence of the American people and the federal government. And you know we can't let that happen. All right, so where are we at? Business, businesses, you do that one, do that one. Republicans just love us for the, until we all die. Just fine with us, whatever. Oh, Republicans, oh, Republicans. I have certainly some political opinions about Republicans and Democrats, but that's neither here nor there. We're all about the, this Mormon money bag man, which I definitely want to play as him whenever Toolbox Three comes out. Like I said before, but still, so it's never gonna come out. Man, we have like no war support. Holy crap! Um, let's go up top. Nothing to pay. The empty treasury. Oh boy, uh, Treasury Secretary Robertson had requested to speak alone with the President Ben after the weekly cabinet meeting, but both were aware of the agenda at hand. How's the Treasury Silver Reserves looking, Albasom? President Ben asked the usual question, to which he received the usual answer. Still bleeding out, Mr. President, and there's worse news. The silver bill won't be enough. Secretary Robertson breathed in after Ben shot him a quizzical glance. We're going to need more silver to tie the silver while the monetary reforms are going on. All right, so where are we going to get the silver from? Bennett leaned back in his chair. American silver mines are tapped out, so presumably we'll have to import the stuff. Right, well, <clears throat> Robertson looked down at his clipboard. Mexico's an option, but the private sector's buying as much as it can carry. Russia's reserves, but it's a god-awful mess in China's and Japan's backyard. Bennett motioned for Robertson to get to the point. Australia, Mr. President. They don't have as many reserves as others, but we can lean on the prime minister to do what's right for the good of the OFM. Let's get on the phone to Canberra. Send the tide. Preparation work is over. As ever, or preparation work is ever a necessity to preclude ruinous upheavals during the state of transition, and the jump from silver to gold demands no exceptions. And when properly, the shift will be pockmarked, pockmarked with volatile markets and price sh shocks as a flux of uncertainty for the economy grips the American people. President Bennett has since directed the Secretary of the Treasury to mint coins with less silver percentage by weight. These transition dimes will become legal tender immediately upon the circulation as the Treasury begins gradually de demonetizing all coins minted before 1968 and demonetizing my channel. Well, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Oh, what is this? What is this? Oh, oh crap. Drafting. Oh, my goodness. Far right, MPP support is low. Center is low. Who cares about the center? And Republican support is milling. Oh, crap. Oh. Honestly, the center means nothing. As you will, one senator. Raise support for the silver after the center and lower support for the far right. Favor the far right. Yeah, that's definitely what we got to do here. Support George Wallace, that fighting little governor. Well, maybe we'll do that one too. So it's low, which is fine. No one cares. 45, 50. Because we have literally one senator, so who cares? Stem the tide is next. I want to save some of the political power. I want to see what we can do with George Wallace. Maybe that'll be a good thing. Maybe that'll be a bad thing. So, yeah, we'll see. Haj, if you want to buy that one, please go ahead. Signs good to be delivered. Because I've read this one before, so. Uh, President Bennett dragged himself to the ringing phone, drowsed the chicken in the bedrocks, or bedside clock. 2 a.m. Not the best time for a caller, thought irritatedly. <clears throat> Bennett, what on earth is so important that... Mr. President, the tre Treasury Secretary Robertson's haggard voice came through the headset. The Aussies have just signed off on her silver deal. That woke Bennett up. That's fantastic. What are they giving us? Well, there's this mine, Broken Hill, that the Australians are willing to divert their silver production from. As much as the Treasury needs on an emergency basis. And excited, Robertson rushed through his words. And they're offering favorable pricing. Much better than we can get on the markets from one friend to another, or that's all they put it. 
from one friend to another. Ben and digested the words. I guess we'll be asking for more defense commitments next year. It's not anything we don't give the Australians to. Oh, anyway, Robertson said. I'd say it's a no-brainer. There won't be a better deal than this. So 42 is 48. Hmm. Hey, 52, not bad. 52 ain't too bad. Stand the tab, my friend. Not, not too little. Raise the center. Uh, we lose a little bit of political power. That's all right. Not too little. <clears throat> Even though we must be careful not to shock the economy, we need to make sure meaningful reform in which our country is financially strong and has a more solid foundation rests on the feet of liberty. The Silver Act will surely do enough to strengthen our country's financial institutions. A trade down under. Uh, President Bennett and Australian Prime Minister Harold Holt watched as the first shipment of the Australian silver made birth in San Diego, with the stevedores rushing up the ramps under the watchful eye of American and Australian soldiers. I can't really thank you enough, Harold, for what you're doing for us, President Bennett said quickly, or quietly. Not, none of this comes cheap, I hear. Your bloody riot's not cheap, Holt said, prompting a few reporters to glance towards the tube. But if America catches a cold, Australia comes down with the flu. If you need the silver so badly, I'm guessing Australia's going to see the benefits. <clears throat> Bennett smiled, of course. Our men in the Pentagon are already working out the details. Australia won't have to pay a penny. Both men were all smiles as a soldier walked up to Holt with a silver ingot in hand. As the cameras closed in around the two, Holt beamed with the press, for the press, as he took the offered ingot and handed it over to Bennett. For my country to yours, Mr. President, may freedom shine eternal. Eternal. Ah, uh, I want to see what Bennett has to say. I really want to see what Bennett has to say for this one. <clears throat> Hopefully it's good. Stay on the tab, my friends. That fine little governor. Nice. They said this job was going to be effing easy. After a long night of the congressional floor, President Bennett assembled us in the Oval Office itself the next morning. Three combat veterans, three Southern Democratic senators, and three figures in the Silver Act vote. Uh, good morning, gentlemen, he said. Let's get face the light here. The Silver Act is creeping up, but the Congress remains polarized, and I fear the worst. So I'm sending you three down to the Serpent of the South himself, George C. Wallace, to guarantee the extra votes. Understood? And there we were. The room was silent. The three of us were silent. The governor of Alabama was just out there quiet. The whole effing building was just quiet. Senators, may I ask what you three are doing down here in my office, he said, as a pouring of whiskey into five separate glasses flowed in front of us. One senator picked up first, coughing, well, sir, <clears throat> the president sent us here to... Oh, my apologies, gentlemen. Please, the travel must have dried your throats. Please, enjoy a drink. He interrupted. No, don't worry, Mr. Governor. I don't drink, I said, shooting me with eyes like daggers. Now as I was saying it, sir, Mr. President, or the President Bennett sent us here to discuss the proceedings of the Silver Act coming up and how we can align our interests for the betterment of the nation, the senator said. Wallace swiveled his chair to see the man stating, align our interests, funny little phrase you have put there. Now, what could the President offer that I may want? The air in the room tied like a noose around the criminal's throat. Well, segregation, sir, the young senator with a southern drawl voiced. Wallace turned, so Ben is finally ready to ease down on protecting the Afros. Well, you have my attention, gentlemen. Go on. The governor asked with a wicked smirk and unending stare. Well, I finally spoke up. The president would be glad to have your support as well as the far-right MPP support for the terms of the Silver Act. In exchange, you're looking to delay the work towards civil rights legislation, which we already did. The room stood silent and still as Wallace's face twisted with contemplation. Suddenly, the room exposed the slamming of the governor's fist on the desk, succeeded by a fierce cackling. Well, gentlemen, you can go tell Bennett that Governor Walsh shall be considered his proposal to rectify relations with the MPP and the Democrats for now, however. He stopped short, clearing his throat of toast to the people of the U.S. I shakily led our side of the toast and down the liquor before leaving. The president said that, he, that this was going to be easy. Oh, I'll see about that. We already did that. But bipartisan effort, jack up prices. Lower support for... Oh, we have to do this. Uh, with the Senate, Republicans are far right. Why? Stop gap measures. Uh, with silver reserves at all-time lows, the metallic backing system that supports America's currency is in a crisis. While uh, the Bennett White House begins to push their legislative reform plan, President Treasury Secretary Robertson has already directed the U.S. Mint to take a variety of stopgap measures, but halting the production of a number of denominations. The hope is that the decline in silver reserves will begin to stabilize. After all, we can't afford to prolificate at times like this. Won't somebody think of the commemorative dollar coins? New source of income worth 1% of current GDP? Nice. Awesome, actually. Jack of prices. The silver supply situation has turned into a crisis. We're running out of silver at an unsustainable pace for a currency. It's time to raise the price of silver in order to stabilize the silver supply until we make it even longer lasting reform. The pain point. <clears throat> With the latest call from the Australian PM, it was sinking in for the President Bennett that there was indeed no such thing as a free lunch. I thought we had a deal. <clears throat> I know, and the armed shipment arrived in Sydney two days ago, but it's not, it's not the issue anymore, Holt said sheepishly. Well, what's the issue then? Bennett scratched his head, trying to figure out Holt's problem. Well, it's a darn poles. The mines are uh, a little upset by the commercial aspect of our trade, uh, silver trade, and they're not exactly convinced that the new weapons are helping them. Holt said, Labor's starting to pick up on the issue, saying that Australia's getting short change, and my bench warmers are getting, or back benchers are getting nervous. They want market pricing. So, let's say I did you a favor and gave you market price. The whole point of this was to build up reserves so we can lend more money to the off end. This isn't going to help us either of us, Bennett stated. On the other end of the line, Bennett could imagine Holt pinching the bridge of his nose, caught between his words and his electorate. President Bennett, I know all this all I know is underpinning the price of silver is causing a stink right here. It'll do the OFN no good if we don't take this on together. Let's give Australia market prices on silver. 
If he deals a deal, I'll steal a ride on the coattails of American Prosperity. It's fine. It's fine. Whatever. Still love us, which is good. Um, honestly, this is holding out pretty strong. I want to make sure. It's very high. That's good. Uh, it's middling. That's fine. It's fine. Fine with us. I do not want to jack up prices, though. Oh, uh, that sucks. Printing replacement notes. Ooh, the power of a handshake. That's not bad. That's good. we got to get the far right on board, because Republicans will probably get on board. So. Harrington speaks out. President Bennett walked into the Oval Office. Only five his entire staff halted around the radio. Uh, a VP4 quickly waved Bennett over. It's Michael Harrington, Mr. President. Bennett frowned. What's the resident socialist angry about today? We kept him out of the loop on Australia. The president might be, must be judged by his actions, and not by his words. And I accept that the administration's civil rights it was bold in scope and worthy of praise, but freedom is a universal value. And it pains me that the administration doesn't recognize that it promotes oppression abroad that while it advocates liberty at home. Harrington's professional or professorial tone did a little high animosity. Pre Bennett Brussel, talk is cheap, Harrington. Has the president ever stopped to consider the human cost of the recent deal with Australians? The broke, m Broken Hill Mine lives up to its name, treating its laborers, many of whom are refugees who fled Japan's rapacious conquest of the Pacific, and atrocious abusive conditions. Harrington paused before going in for the kill. The American people need to know that the president benefit counts of silver dollars with hands drenched in blood. That's Australian's problems, not mine. Jack up them prices? God dang it. A bipartisan effort, which will help us out. MPP grows a little more unified, I guess. Oh, we get more political power, too, which is nice. Regardless if you're an RD or a national progressive, all parties will be able to agree that the Silver Act will be beneficial for the entire country. <laughs> Price isn't right. Students gathered in the dormitory common room with placards and markers in hand. A little assembly line of protest signs and slogans, all to advance a common cause of dignity and liberty in America and beyond. Quick. Everyone quiet. Harrington's coming on. The student fell silent as Michael Harrington, the star of the CMPP and the student left, came on TV screen to speak to the reporters. They gathered around the TV in the back, waiting for the words of wisdom. Mr. Harrington. You've been quite critical of the Bennett administration's deal with Australia regarding silver imports. What do you make of the president's announcement today? A chorus of hisses and boos arose from the assembled students at the, at the reporter's words, only to be hushed by those trying to listen. Well, the administration said that it doesn't have the authority to tell Australia to do right by the Pacific Islanders that are, frankly, being enslaved to feed our own desperate need for cheap cash. Harrington said venomously, If President Bennett claims to be the moral center for an American divided, we ought to point at Australia as a shining example of where those values lead. Down with Bennett the menace. I don't know. It really turned in... I guess you could say, like, Ben into a villain from Harrington, but he doesn't have that much sway. So, <laughs> whatever. Anyways, a couple of comments included, um, someone says we should go for the center. Well, I mean, I'd like to, but at this point, the center means, like, nothing. Um, oh, Horton dreams of silver. Oh, look at that. Matt Horton was in the business of selling dreams. The child's face brightening with while they had a miniature boat and all. A parent's slight smiles to reach for a model ray gun. A perfect birthday present. From the till of his toy shop, Horton watched his customers peruse his collection knowing that their money was a small price to pay for happiness. Horton too dreamed. He dreamed of expansion. He dreamed of the millions of children in America in need of joy. Far beyond Lawrence, Kansas. But he needed funds beyond what he currently had to expand into the next county over, let alone nationwide. And whenever he visited the local bank to ask about a loan, he'd always have a rude awakening. Through his money, if he was ready to pay the usurious usurious interest. Something about there not being enough money, which sounded ridiculous. How could that Uncle Sam not have two nickels rubbed together? The loan officer would always shrug apologetically. What could he do, or Horton do, if there wasn't enough silver in Washington? And so each week, Horn would walk into the bank branch with fading hope and walk out with dying dreams. Today would be no different. He was sure until the manager whisked him into his office. Mr. Horton, there's some good news today. Silver's back, the dream yet lives, and an emergency price increase. Glasses clinked throughout the restaurant, sealing deals and friendships. David tried to figure out what brand of vermouth they used here. But it was apparently a trade secret. No matter, the martinis were dry as a bone, and the conversations were juicy by the standards of com commodities bankers. More and more, these conversations were turning one thing silver. The guys in Toronto were practically banging on my door trying to figure out the right spot price. New Peruvian products are going to get murdered on OPEX. I don't care what the department is saying. Gosh darn disgraceful. Uh, interfering like this, David bit his lip thinking about all the deals and projects and fortunes tied up in this business. All being thrown into disarray by the Bennett White House, a great silver buyout. Supply was getting tired and the price was growing higher. Stabilizing reserves, my booty thought. Simply assume and refill as we do a bipartisan effort. Power of a handshake? Uh, far right. Uh, our reserves will lose some money. You know what? Printing replacement notes. We're probably going to do that next. El Silver certificates are phased out. New notes. Uh, notes backed by gold are needed to take their place long before the lack of presence is felt by the economy. To ensure the transition is as smooth as possible, the Treasury has been printing a new design series of paper bills in conjunction with the transition dimes, with the new greenbacks to get, begin circulation at the earliest convenience. Current projections predict new greenbacks to replace all legal tender in circulation within the next five years. Um, let's see. 
What is this one? Our current lands are surrounded by many evil warlords, enemies of our state that seek to transform our people into slaves of an unnatural ideology. Of course, we're referring to our fascists and communist neighbors. Unfortunately, much of Russia has fallen to the fascist scourge and the communist plague, and Europe is dominated by the abhorrent national socialists. Our fellow democratic friends are simply too far away. It's imperative that we establish relations with a respectable defender of democracy. <clears throat> we now look to the U.S. for a potential friendship, as they are the only bearer of democracy that will listen to our plight. We must establish diplomatic ties with America for the sake of our own republic, and our people must have a shining example of democracy to idolize. Surely the Americans will listen to our story? We are the Americans, though. What the heck? Uh, Catholic opinion. There you go. <clears throat> Middling, middling, uh, oh, Mormons. There you go. And since we're down here, middling, that's not good. Oh, that's not good. Uh, oh. That's only 20, so. <clears throat> 63 is going to jump up, hopefully. 78, that's not bad. Uh, Republican support would be good, too. Yeah. So, 42, hopefully, jumps up a little higher. 115 ain't too bad, though. Okay, 57 is not bad. And Senator's negative 20, but no one gives a crap about them. And we get more political power this way, too, which is awesome, 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 awesome. So, did Goran get cooed? Probably did. No, he did not yet. Okay. Lessons from Switzerland. Okay, so he's still alive for now. Also, the, uh, yeah, with the military English command there, so. Dance partner, if you want to buy that, please go right ahead. How romantic. <clears throat> middling, 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 irrelevant stuff. Easy pickings. While there's no shortage of issues for the Bennett administration to tackle civil rights, uh, stabilizing the RDs as Japanese and the NPP is braying for war, everyone in Washington was sick and tired of the post-war economic malaise. With over a decade of analysis by the Treasury Department and the Federal Reserve, the problem was well understood by both the RDs and the NPP. The depletion of American silver reserves were pushing American inexorably towards the currency crisis, even as economic recovery in America and the OFN depended on an ever-increasing supply of dollars. Treasury Secretary Absalom Robertson walked uh, President Bennett through the best option. It all comes down to the Silver Act, Mr. President. It's a stopgap measure, asking the Treasury to prohibit further sales of silver and to repeal silver-related legislation, stabilizing silver outflows until we can introduce a new commodity to back the dollar. President Bennett nodded approvingly. Nobody wants to take the responsibility for hurting the economy. We might even be able to get part of the MPP on board with on this, Robertson added. We just need to find the right person to approach in either the center or the far right. Bennett leaned back concerns options. Henry Jackson in the center? Pfft. Approach Wally Barron to the far right. Could have heard her. Well, I mean, what? who cares? We have to do with the Republicans. We have to. They're still 85, which is nice, but still. Um, Very high. The far right agrees with Silver Act. Senator Barry or Barron of the MPP endorses Bennett's Silver Act. Bipartisan support, a major boost. President Bennett was all smiles as he read through the headlines of the Washington Post. Oh, it's been a near-run thing. The MPP was hardly inclined to work closely with the RDs of the best of times, and the far right in particular were always smelling blood in the water ever since Nixon had split the country over civil rights. How'd you get them to agree and to support us? Treasury Secretary Robertson asked the obvious question. We'll be coming back to call us for favors though, later. Oh, there were no favors, just a healthy dose of reality, President Bennett laughed heartily. When we tell the American people that they're going to have to have fatter paychecks next year, I don't think anyone wants to be on the record against that. Get with the times or can be left behind. Uh, foreign businesses. Yeah. And over here. 105. Holy crap. Nice. Caucasian anarchy. Nice. The power of a handshake. Compromise is key for any successful change to clear our change to our financial institutions. If we do not have a clear supermajority on at least on our financial situation, our country will be doomed to failure with a weakened economy and political divisions are already deep in thanks to the social issues affecting our country. Let's make sure to prevent such division to, for our financial system. Um, go there. It's fine. Slow by the time. Don't really give a crap, though. At this point, it, it really doesn't matter. Cool. Yeah, we need more Republican support. But progressive, uh, like, MPP, uh, far-right PP, MPP is really nice. Separation of state, appeal of the Mormons. Might as well, for now. Keep them all happy for now. Uh, do both these guys by now. Party unity, we don't care right now. Why would, we, why would we care about party unity? We basically got rid of them Democrats, and they're all gonna go to the, uh, MPP. If you're in Lowly in LA, if you want to about that one, please go right ahead, please. Thank you very much. It's different, I guess. Power of a handshake? Yes, please. Get some better guns. Uh, the M16A1. What a rifle. What a rifle. Middling, middling, high, high, middling, uh... Hey. Uh, yeah, it's not bad. Catholic... Oh, uh, hello. Italy? Yeah, no thanks. A truly united Congress. It's a truly proud for citizens to see both parties come together for financial reform. When both parties work together, the government is more united. Our country is unified. And our people and their faith in the U.S. is made stronger. The U.S. must be stronger financially to fight the despicable dictatorial regimes of Japan and the German Reich. Those are more unified, give more political power. Very nice. There you go. Catholics, there you go. Um, Mormons, there you go. 
Oh, there goes Sweden. Bye, Sweden. Germany's... They're still on the warpath. They're doing quite well. 100 is very good. 53. We gotta save some people power for that. That's off. Ooh, Scandinavia looks pretty nice. Norland? Huh. Hmm. The parachute is absolute. How far are you gonna go, Goring? You've taken... Oh, uh, they still need to invade. The, they're probably going to die, die there. So if you want to about this, please go to head. Yeah, it's a long way to November. We're going to continue boning R and D, and let's see what we can achieve. Safe MVP Deep South. I mean, what do you expect? Um, maybe Great Plains. Ooh, West Coast. Let's go West Coast. Yeah, I'll start with the West Coast. Just in case. Let's save just in case, because, uh, because we can. Oh, Bennett, Mormon, money bags. Interesting campaign. Interesting. Power of a handshake? Oh, yes, please. Avaria, huh? Flam of Rafa? Very cool. Military, please, because you can. Silver Act. Flush with gold and silver, our founders decreed that these two precious metals are on the bedrock upon which the value of our dollars are established. These have either has changed as political winds shifted over the course of 200 years. Currently, emergency legislation from the Depression ties the dollar to silver bullion only, rather than silver and gold. This, however, leaves the American dollar relying on a metal whose deposits are increasingly becoming outpaced by America's economic growth. Eventually, the country will run out of bullion before it runs out of greenbacks. To rectify this looming crisis, President Bennett aims to decouple the dollar from silver in increments, using less silver in coinage, restricting dollar to silver conversions, and eventually reunite the country's currency with much more plentiful gold. Mankind may not want to be crucified upon a cross of gold, say as a certain presidential candidate, but neither will it agree. Surely, to be crucified, have this cross be made out of silver instead. Now we're done with our land auction. Finally, good RD campaign. That's good here. Very, 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 very good. I don't see anything here. Can we do that? No, no, we gotta wait. Huh? That oh, sucks. Um, I think we gotta wait. God dang it. Ben says battleships are on the menu. God, I hope we have enough support for this campaign, and then we'll do that eventually. Actually, let's come back up here too. I close this out. Political landscape. Oh, we're ready for anything. We're reunited, which is great to see. Um, we can't strengthen pro-American business and sentiment yet. That's fine. Whatever. Oh, don't rock the wait. Oh, upcoming Senate race, but what happened to the whole... Oh, crap. Uh, a two dollar... Do ocean charter? Hmm. Requires a silver act. Uh, lower interest rates? Why not? Fix the change rates. Tree trade by default assumes a degree of reciprocity. 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 In order for both parties to benefit from a trade, the balance must gr not grow at this latter's expense. Should one side profit significantly more than the other, then the ensuing trade imbalance will result in an increasingly untenable relationship that sours long-term friendly relations as ably as war. Oh, look at hungry. Complicating attempts to establish mutually beneficial and favorable trade agreements among OFM members is a disparity in value created by the proverbial anarchy regarding national exchange rates. One for the Canadian dollar, another for the Australian dollar, another still for the Guyana and West Indies dollar. President Bennett believes that a solution may be found in fixing the rates with respect to the American dollar, and values which benefit us and them in equal measure. Well, equal enough. Uh, let's see. West Coast. We're doing quite well, but still. Republicans are still very high. Holy crap. We went back up in 97. We were like at 80 something. We're, oh, it keeps going up. Nice. So we basically have Republicans until the end of the campaign with us. Nice. We'll, we'll see what happens with the polls. I don't trust the polls very much. Even in my own real life. I don't trust them very much at all. We should be able to pass it right with a lot of the far right and Republican support. 26 plus 49. I mean, even if we only get like 30 Republicans and all the far right, we should still do okay. You might get a Democrat too as well. Maybe, maybe not. Cool. Let's come back up top. Do this just for the pee-pee. We do a lot of things just for the pee-pee. <coughs> Can't build more savings, which sucks, but it's all right. Almost lost 100 billion debt. All right. Silver Act fights through Congress. The Bennett administration worked relentlessly on the scrutinizing reviews regarding the Silver Act. The president collaborated with a multitude of secretaries within the upper levels of the West Wing to finalize the bill. Vice President Ford has declared that the bill's passage has become one of the most prioritized plans of the Bennett administration in an effort to aid the American economy. Bennett leads a charge to rouse the Democrats' action, driving them to support his plan to replace the American economy into a more stable position by transferring the currency back metal to that of gold, which is now far more reliable than that industrial silver as a store of value. One of the most important details of the Silver Act would be the repeal of the 34 Silver Purchase Act, which would level off the focus on silver mining and promote fiscal responsibility within the government, as quoted by Treasurer Secretary Absalom Robertson. <clears throat> However, while the bill appears to be siding towards approval within the Congress, there are those within the U.S. that would seek the bill's favor. Many spurned Southern Democrats who have turned to the far-right MPP find the bill to be distasteful, hurting current silver miners. Likewise, an odd coalition, the center branch of the MPP has outspoken members standing against the bill, claiming that it will hurt American jobs. 
All that's left to see is whether the bill will survive the battleground of the Congress. Legislative branch decides their fate now. Oh god, our burning a bear. Um, subtract money, political realities. Eh, the gold standard. MPP grows my pocket bill for reserves. Eh, free cause. American ideals. It's huge. Two ocean charter. The U.S. is a crossroads of trade between two, two oceans, along with which products from its booming factories are delivered upon mighty ships for our allies across the waters of purchase. Our propensity to exchange products for money with our fairway customers has benefited America's economy since its founding. Free trade policies ensure that such transoceanic governments uh, are in agreements will continue unabated save for the gravest of externalities. President Benz announced a series of free trade agreements and similar policies that shall apply among and to be ratified by members of the OFM. Representatives from its member states have thus far voiced their approval of the President's attempts to strengthen the alliance through such and treaties of mutual economic cooperation. Nice. And that's 100 billion? Nice. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Yeah, we're producing an anti tank. Better anti tank. Awesome. Uh, it's time to campaign some more. Oh, where do we want to campaign? Southwest? Maybe? Southwest? It's not going to be worth very much. But oh, Silver Act. Here we go. Oh, crap. We're not going to pass it, are we? Oh, oh no. Yes, we are. So the Democrats love it. The Republicans don't generally like, eh. And the far right loves it. Oh, thank God we got George Wallace. So there is over 60 support. 69. Nice. 69 senators who want this passed. And Silver Act passes. Look at that. After gathering on the steps of the Congressional Building in Washington, D.C. in the early morning, uh, political analysis report that the Silver Act, a bill shepherded by the Bennett administration through multiple discussions, analysis, analyses, and negotiations, has successfully passed in both houses of Congress and is set to <clears throat> pass and be signed into law. The Silver Act's passage proves the potential of hardworking advisors and officials who managed to construct a piece of legislation after months of hard work within the West Wing, Treasury, and those outside of D.C. President Ben himself commented on the bill's passage this evening, declaring it a crowning achievement of both unity and potential for the U.S. of A. And a step forward for a new era of economic success. Multiple figures in Bennett's administration, including Treasurer Absalom Robertson, have echoed President Bennett's enthusiasm, stating that the silver system served to bog the U.S. down in an outdated system, while the gold system will allow us to continue to show American economic strength worldwide. Republicans and Democrats applaud each other for the bipartisan cooperation towards the bill's success. On the other side of the aisle, MPP senators and representatives appear rather quiet over the outcome of the Silver Act. While some hail the success of the bill along the RDs, others exchange confused glances over the ease of the bill's passage. For now, however, the U.S. takes the first steps towards adopting gold to back the dollar. We've done it, everybody. We've done it. We have done it. Passage of the Silver Purchase Act of 68. Today, the Silver Act passed both houses of the Congress with a moderate fanfare. In spite of some more reservations about the economic impact of the Act, it passed with a significant majority. The Act has mostly been a part of a larger move away from the silver as a currency backed metal in favor of other options, notably gold. Of a more, more a removal of past legislation than anything, this Act includes multiple provisions geared towards a decrease in silver backing. This major, most major among these directives is the repeal of the 1934 Silver Purchase Act, which effortlessly, or effectively, subsidized and encouraged silver mining to unnatural levels. This act also allowed for the production of two Federal Reserve notes to keep up with the, the changing economy. Lawmakers hope the act will prove successful. The repeal of the Silver Purchase Act will prevent rampant overspending on silver by the Treasury and hopefully increase fiscal responsibility in general. Concerns over the passage have been minimal, and many are greatly relieved by the move towards a more simplified and robust currency. Our currency is no longer pegged to silver. Well, look at that. Silver purchase act. We get more political power, less consumer goods. The RDs become more popular. Poverty improves and it decreases the effects of the American Depression. And no one likes to be depressed, except for some people. Now, ladies. A ray of hope. Awesome. And, okay, so the death of the Supreme Court Justice. Uh, it was a conservative, so. Okay, not bad, not bad. CCF victory, huh? Who's that? Cooperative Commonwealth Federation, Social Democratic and Agrarian Party. All right, well, 100, doesn't matter. Majority, 63, 55, huh? Hey, Mormons. Oh, I uh, mean, Catholics. Oops, wrong one. Catholics, whatever. Nice. Oh, look at that. The GDP growth is a little better. I like that a lot. This is so far it's turning out to be a successful campaign. We're getting everything that we want. Snapshots from Stonewall. That thing is still going on. If you wonder about that, please go right ahead. Life thrives in some of the strangest of places. And, of course, RDs suck. Uh, free at Clause Act. Our dues to hull. Death of the tariff. Isolationism never again. Why bird of peace? Look worse in northern states, huh? 
uh, free tr uh, free access clause. Free movement goes hand in hand with free trade. In fact, one can say traditional requirements to travel abroad belong to the very barriers which free trade inherently poses. Tolls, tariffs, and lengthy permits all impede the free flow of goods between nations, often at significant cost to both producer and consumer. Compounding this issue is the fact that such laws differ from country to country, keeping track of them all without a universal standard stifles and has stifled trade without reason. Therefore, President Bennett, keen on reforming yet another pass of the largest alliance of democracies on earth, the plans on dismantling some of these barriers by proposing e unified immigration and tariff standards for the OFN if ratified. They'll ease cross-member state movement of people and goods to an unprecedented level extent. Every Ooh, look at this. MPP, if you want to be at this, please go right ahead. We like Mike. Michael Harrington. Uh, yeah, I'll go for Mike this time. We'll do Mike. Mike it up. There you go. Uh, where do you want to campaign? Yeah, it seems pretty likely that we're going to win anyway, so we'll see what happens, but no, it's pretty likely. Southwest, New England maybe, yeah, New England. Maybe the South maybe, but yeah, I doubt we'll get very far. Stay in the course, my way or the highway, remember that, please go right ahead. Social democracy goes up a little more, whatever, don't really care. Polls are updated, alrighty. Middling, uh, probably a bad idea to do this. Businesses, we'll have to do this for a while then. Party unity doesn't... No one gives a crap about, about party unity. CIA. Anything here interesting? Nope. Political landscape. Yep, we're looking pretty good. Not gonna lie, looking pretty good. Democrat primaries. The convention for the RD party has reached its conclusion on live TV with Wallace F. Bennett giving a rousing speech to his assembled delegates in the Chicago's International Amphitheater. Calling for party unity, finishing what they have started, and going forth to bring the America closer to ever to the shining city on the hill that the founding fathers claimed America would be. It wasn't exactly a cakewalk for Wallace F. Bennett as they faced a spirited resistance from Senator Barry Goldwater from Arizona and John Glenn, Governor of Ohio, both Goldwater and Glenn, so had to replace the current president, either by going to the right and appeal to the Democratic wing of the party in case of Goldwater, or further to the left and Republicans for Glenn. However, neither managed to get many delegates in a few primaries that were held for the RDs, and just as soon as they announced candidacies, they are forgotten and left on the sideline course. But now the president has kept focus on his eventual opponent in the MPP, and Wallace Bennett, and secretly hoping that they can win a second term as easily as he pushed out AU, H2O, and Glenn Rogers from the nomination. Huh. <laughs> Four more years. Nice. Gold, water, and Mr. Glenn. American ideals. Why not? Oh, assassinated if you about that, please go ahead. It's out of control. Oh, well. I know of a man who once said that virtue grows best in times of adversity. Having acted as both an observer and participant of American greatest events uh, in the past two decades, his words rang truer than he must have ever thought. Uh, let's see. Consider America's orientation as regards to the wider world. To our east, the German tyrants suppress a whole continent and consign millions to the centuries old evils of slavery. To our west, the rising sun scorches the backs of a billion laborers in the name of a sphere whose luxuries they must craft but can never partake of. Freedom uh, has marched a heavy retreat since the Second World War and its exhaustion. It has settled upon later deliberate star-spangled crowns. Its influence has manifested in the achievements that we have since attained at furthering the freedoms of man, economic, political, and social. Today we are mired in a war of higher purpose than any war undertaken by any man in human history. It's a brinksmanship. Not of arms, but of words and deeds. It is one through exploiting... Uh, it's only one through exploiting the flaws of lasting ideologies, not the flaws of short-lived men. Thus, there's no better time to flaunt the timeless principles that we, the people, have enshrined into our democracy's laws, that it's all men are created equal, and that we're all bestowed by God in an inalienable right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Beautiful recognition by the U.S. We see the message from Gregory Zukov, the Grand Marshal of the U.S. The Russian Revolutionary Front. They uh, <clears throat> wish to be recognized as the legitimate state and the legitimate government of West Russia. Should we accept, we'll show our close alignment with the front and may anger some of the other Russian governments in Germany, however. It's no doubt expand our partnership and may even bring the close, front closer to us, possibly giving us a future ally. West Russia is also producing a large number of goods and recognize that the government will surely better our trade relations. However, we do not share a similar government with the front, us being from a capitalist republic and them being a more or less a communist dictatorship. It may go against our values of democracy, but hey, at least they hate fascists, right? Zukov's also seem inclined to reform, so it may very well be in our interest still. Whatever. Images from a funeral you want about that, please go right ahead. Someday? Maybe. We'll see. Oh, the debt went down by 0.5%. Interest. Nice. Not bad. Pretty good. <sighs> 68 still. Oh, what happened there? Oh, wait. I already gave him independence. But okay, whatever. Great Lakes, huh? Might as well. Don't rock the boat. 66, 76. Not bad. I could do that one too. 74 is nice. 69 is okay. Nice. But still. We're building a lot of forts. Guarantee we got a lot of forts being in production. Because we got nothing else to build. So. Protect American business interests. 
We got some more stuff down here. Four days with more support weapons. It's still 68, which sucks. I wish it was 69, so at least we can go to, uh... We won't have that much of a penalty. Oh, we're going about Space Odyssey. Please go ahead. My god, this is all full of stars. Falls update, that's fine. Nice. Only 627 factories. Is that all? 1.28 political power every single day is not bad. Span cut. Cut. Or, you know, yeah, cut the debt, at least. That'd be nice. Um, set high, high Catholic opinion is middling. That's fine. We can do that real quick. See what happens. Free Clause Act. We might need some more political power. You never know. So I gotta stop spending it like crazy. Death of the Tariff. Mediocre campaign, of course. White Bird of Peace. The free of the market, the free of the people. Interest rates on our debt will be decreased. That's good. Ooh. Armed professionals begin to improve, huh? Yeah, I guess we'll see what happens, you know? See what happens. Nothing there yet, which is fine. Uh, dues to Hull. Might as well do that one. But first, let's do this one first. Let's do this uh, Deep South. I don't see if we can do anything with the Deep South at all. Uh, former Secretary of State Cordell Hull stands among the greatest of uh, American politicians of the past generation. His acumen in managing the Byzantine workings of foreign diplomacy has assured the U.S. a firm place on the world stage in K Kennedy Senior's administration. Twenty years on, he remains a respectable figure among congressmen, Democrat, Republican, or National Progressive. More German germane to the President's purpose as Secretary Hull's fervent advocacy for strengthening America's ties with the free nations of the world. By invoking his legacy the, of the work he has bequeathed to us, we may compel congressmen sympathetic to our old statesmen to be more thoroughly consider our policies before they vote. Debate with Michael Harrington. Another glare of the TV uh, cameras. Bennett. President Bennett and Michael Harrington walk, walk stiffly towards each other, offering each other thin smiles and a wooden handshake. The two are highly friendly. Harrington's been a vocal critic of Bennett's international policy since day one of the administration, singling out Bennett's prefer preferential trade policies with the OFN's betrayal of American labor. As the debate moves into the topic of foreign affairs, Harrington wastes no time going on the attack, Mr. President. I'm often approached by people on the street, good, hard-working, honest Americans, whether they'll also have a job next year. These are steel miners, or miners, steel workers, farmers, the beating heart of American industry. How can you claim to be keeping America strong when your administration subsidizes the purchases of foreign goods, leaving Americans grasping for pennies? Bennett smiles neutrally uh, back at Harrington. The beautiful thing about trade, Mr. Harrington, is that everyone benefits. You say that American industry is being weakened. I say it's roaring to ever greater heights as shares come down across the o OFM. You say that America is weakened by our purchases from our allies. Would you prefer that we squeeze our allies dry like the Nazis or other puppets? America can never stand alone in this world, certainly not while facing the likes of the Germans and Japanese. Oh no, the vote is went with Her Bennett? Oh, who would have who would have guessed? Who would have flipping guessed? God, I want to build more civvies. I wish we could get back to Hawaii. That'd be more interesting to do as well. Can we do this one yet? I didn't really look. It's already October. Oh, yes, we can. Um, so, what are we campaigning for? It's going to be over soon, but whatever. That's fine. You never know how much people are going to need. So, let's take a look. So, we have 49 Republicans, 22 Democrats, 1 Senate, 26 far right. So, we'll see what happens, because Ben is pretty popular right now. Let's see. I'll die Stevenson the third. It sounds familiar. Did you try to campaign for president once? I don't remember. Strom Thurmond? God bless Strom Thurmond. Oh, look. RD support down is pretty high. If you want to read about all fools in prisons, please go right ahead. Oh, can we not do this one, too? The one on the right? Oh, we gotta do this one, too. That's fine. Let's build up our reserves. Uh, we could, yeah, might as well. For all the virtues we foisted upon gold as much as a precious metal silver. Valuable, heavy, and limited. Fort Knox is only so much gold bullion to support an economy as titanic as the U.S., even if its gold mines are degrees more plentiful than their silver counterparts. To prepare for the eventual transition, President Bennett has urged appropriate federal apparatuses to build up our gold bullion reserves for the rest of his term. Election Day is 68. More than a year of announcements, uh, speeches, debates, and rallies come to an end. Uh, on November 5th, 1968, with Election Day, millions of Americans have lined up at the school gymnasiums, libraries, civil centers, and fire stations across the nation to fulfill their civic and democratic duty. This year marks the 46th quadrennial presidential election, but there will also be 21 state gubernatorial elections to decide state governors, 34 Senate seats, and all 435 seats in the House of Representatives, and many other local and state elections for mayors, councilors, sheriffs, judges, and more across the nation. However, the presidential elections is what everyone's tuning into the radio and TV to learn about as their polls are closed. As the night goes on, the votes are kind of reported. It soon becomes clear who will become and who will sit in the White House for the next four years. President Bennett. So the Democratic Party actually came back. So there are no more center, uh, center senators. Wow. 46 Republicans, which is pretty good. 30 Democrats, not too bad. 20 far right. We still have a solid South here. The warning. Oh, if you want about that, please go right ahead. God dang. God dang, son. Not bad. We lost a few Republicans, but whatever. 
We got a few more Democrats, which they don't like us, which I'm surprised that the far right actually went down in support. I thought they'd go up higher. But hey, this poverty's getting better. Two months is not going to be, it's not very much, but hey, we'll take whatever we can get, right? Come on, get a 69. You know, let's go. We'll just probably do some stuff. Yeah, the Republicans lost the Democrats, which is, well, whatever. Don't really care. Middling, which is not great. Uh, we can do that just a little bit. Middling, yeah. 85, that's middling, middling. Oh, the Catholics are very high to do with us. Oh, that's kind of nice. Upcoming race? <laughs> well, Ben has got a second term, so that's what matters. Um, Yeah, our dues to hold will be good to get done. Child labor is illegal. What the heck? What type of pop of cock is that? Nice. Balls are updated. Presidential election season is over. Here, the chief, whoever it may be. Well, if you want to read about this one, I think I read this one before. If you want to read about this, go ahead. We'll recognize them? We'll recognize them as well, because screw it, why not? Who cares at this point? We'll recognize everybody who wants to be recognized. 80 billion ain't bad, though. We recognize Omps government. Seems like a nice place to visit. Build up our reserves, everybody. We've got to build, 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 build. The gold standard. The Senate grows more pop popular? Yeah. The white bird of peace. Lower relations with de Democrats. Well, actually, we can do this one immediately just because uh, the, the elections are over. So it doesn't matter, right? The white bird of peace. Given the choice between total war and a long peace, a rational businessman will always prefer the latter option. While beneficial defense contractors and weapon manufacturers to an extent, a protracted conflict or preparation for one can birth enough uncertainties of a ruinous and destabilizing nature to the American economy. Additionally, the opportunity cost associated with a large military beggar belief. Precious billions of tax dollars for the many vital programs that the federal government maintains will instead go to expensive weapon systems for wars increasingly unlikely to come. Knowing this, President Penn has decided to rationalize America's defense budget for the rest of his term. While unpopular with the work war hawks populating with both of the NPP and his own party. He believes sensible spending takes precedence over political grand staking. Which is fine with, because we don't care about the, the, the uh, fine, fine folks over there. Oh, 30 billion, nice. Nice, not bad. Um, we still have 200 political party. I'm not spending a little bit more. Let's go with the Mormons. Second inauguration of the Wallace F. Bennett. A liberal now, huh? After a hard-fought election campaign against the NPP, President Wallace F. Bennett was sworn in for the second term as President of the U.S. today. For cheering crowds on the National Mall, President Bennett noted in his address to the nation that I see no distinction between party or politics before me. I only see Americans in a solemn vow to leave the Republic stronger tomorrow than it is today. Despite a heavy emphasis on American tradition and patriotic republicanism, Washington insiders have noted that Ben has promised nothing radically different from the 64 campaign. A promise of stability and continuity. The amiable patriarch shepherding America through the social convulsions of the early 60s and the service of the linchpin of the free world through the OFM. And this, it seems, is exactly what American voters wanted. A steady pair of hands steering the ship to... In a ship of state into the next decade, tending the hearth of freedom against foreign enemies and domestic radicals. Four more years? America wanted four more years of Mr. President, Mr. Mormon President, steady as she goes? Well, even though we did rock the boat just a wee bit, but oh, well, and unity is pretty high. We like that a lot. We do have a ray of hope as well, which is very, very nice. That's fine to do for now. Ease any sort of spheres and spheres and stuff like that. That's fine. Build up them reserves. A white bird of peace. Um, 300 sums is pretty good. Ooh, let's do Mormons. The gold standard. Might as well. Yeah, we can do that. Burning a bear. Uh, raise it for. Uh, why not? We'll do this one first. The population over 200 million and the lively economy to match. The U.S. is an economic power surpassing even the German Reich and the Japanese coal prosperity sphere. The same cannot be said of the quality, uh, quilt work of erstwhile colonies and of new nations which compromise the rest of the OFM. Yeah, we demand equal contributions militarily. And diplomatically, from them in exchange for membership, hardly a fair deal in any estimation. Though they'll never catch or match what we can achieve. President Bennett believes it's our responsibility to bring them closer to our level regardless. Thus, he plans on having Americans shorter portion of the debt and inject dollars into the markets, encouraging healthier budgets and stronger consumer spending. And the gold standard. Now that the U.S. dollar is deemed sufficiently weaned from silver, President Bennett's economic advisors have begun drafting a bill along with leading Republican Democratic congressmen to reset the gold standard as its bedrock. Its implementation may cause short-term and potentially destabilizing fluctuations in the stock market and economy, although economists predict that the long-term stability and growth the transition provides are worth its repercussions. Not bad. We're going to do both books. I'll do one of them off-screen as well. Uh, political landscape, like, ready for anything. Everybody's working well together. American society is united, so overall, not bad. State of the Supreme Court is quite conservative. I won't say very conservative, but it's quite conservative. Very conservative would be like 7 to 2. Uh, I say quite conservative, but maybe that's just me. Let's do the gold standard first, and we'll do the other one probably off screen. We'll see. Bennett speaks for peace. It is not in the interest of the U.S. to be at war forever. Secretary of State Edmund Muskie 
uh, stands before a crowd of several hundred. That's a rainy day in Fulton, Missouri, and his professors, students, and foreign policy experts have gathered to hear him try and sell the administration's foreign policy. While we seek freedom and justice throughout the world, it cannot be always be accomplished with swords and powder. Trade, built on the foundation of a stable financial order, can spread liberty much faster than any bomb or bullet. By working with our allies in the OFN and bringing new nations into, the, into this bastion, the world may once again know freedom from fear and oppression. The suits and the crowds applaud politely, but with relish, after all. The, this administration is speaking the language of stability and freedom. What's more American than that? Sufficient to have stood through, though free to fall. Decrease? That would decrease a little. Hold on. So we're at 66 billion. And grow a little more unified. Did anything go down? I don't know about that. So we're going to do the gold standard. We'll, and we'll talk about that event. We're going to do our burden to bear off screen, probably. And maybe political realities? Try that. Free the market, free the people. Uh, we're probably going to. Let's see. 300 years of proof, proof that a free market accelerates the flowering of human freedom more than any grand delinquent cause in human history. Democracies rise where men are free to organize their fortunes as they see fit, and liberty shines brightest where free men engage in business unfettered by the chains of tyrants and dictators. Free markets have paved the way and the path to enlightenment once, and so shall it pave the uh, path to the future. As a champion of freedom, America has an unspoken obligation to encourage free markets whenever and wherever possible. President Ben is cognizant of the con of consequent duties as a champion's helmsman, and thus shall propose more measures to free its own markets. Free the markets and free the people. Generally. Not always, but generally. Generally. Uh, can we get more political power yet? Yes, we can. So let's get more pee-pee. Broken air, the sum of all fears. If you don't know about that, please go right ahead. So ordered. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. The gold standard, my friends. The American Gold Standard. Washington AP. The President Bennett signed the Gold Standard Act into law today following his passage by the Senate 11 days ago. The new law, which pegs the U.S. dollar to $35 per troy ounce of gold, was one of the President's signature election promises. After signing the law, the President stated, With the signing of this act, the American economy entered the new era of stability. Our allies and partners abroad join us to create a stable financial order that may all may benefit from. I'm confident that across continents and oceans, prosperity and trade will be spread like they've never have been before. Was, wasn't there a movie about this with a witch and a scarecrow? But I think that's going to end and conclude today's episode. If you enjoyed it and Mr. Mor Mormon Moneybags, please do leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we'll continue on with Bennett's second term. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous, tremendous gold and silver rest of your day.